Let's gather up some of those beautiful fabrics that we have in our stash to create some stunning fall fabric DIYs for our fall home decor. Hey, it's Donna here. Welcome to my channel. For this project, I'm using this candle that I had picked up from Michael's on clearance last year, and I am just removing the label off of it. I really like the scent as well as the color of this candle. Now, recently I was at Michael's and I did see that they had another one that was similar to this. I believe it was called Sunflower. Anyways, I removed all the labels. I used Goo Gone to remove all the adhesive off of it and then washed it off with some Dawn dish soap. Here I have a piece of some scrap burlap fabric. I have a ton of this, just little pieces that I've been wanting to use up and I thought this would create a really nice rustic farmhouse look. So I'm just trimming it down and I'm gonna be using some fabric glue on the back side of this. Now. I wasn't sure how well this would stick to the glass, so I'm just being careful not to add too much because I don't want the glue to seep through the fabric. It will show on the other side, so I didn't want that. So I'm just being very careful with how much I apply and I'm smoothing it out with my finger and then I'm going to press it down onto the glass. Just gently smoothing it out and pressing it into place and then I've got this gorgeous coffee dyed muslin fa scrap fabric that I had. I'm just going to tear the piece because I want a nice rough and rustic edge to this. I'm just going to cut it down. Now I don't cut it right down to the size I need at this point because I'm going to do some stamping. I'm using this archival ink in the color potting soil. I have a little bumblebee, a sunflower and a saying that says home sweet home. And I'm going to stamp that onto this piece of fabric. Now archival ink is a permanent ink, so it's not going to react with the glue once I use this. I'm also doing everything on a protected work surface. So you'll definitely want to keep that in mind when you're doing a craft project like this. Once I have my image stamped out onto the fabric, I can then start to cut it down to the size that I needed. I'm just fraying the edges by just removing some of those uh, pieces off the edge here. If you do end up having to cut a straight edge, you can just kind of pluck away at the strings until you remove some of those excess threads to create a frayed edge. Once you're happy with the size, again, I'm going to be using my fabric glue and I'm being careful with how much I apply. I'm going right onto the burlap fabric and smoothing it out and then pressing the fabric into place. And I'm just making sure that when I'm doing this, I'm keeping my cotton fabric in place so I know exactly where I need to glue it down. Now, I admit that I actually think I should have maybe done a little bit of stitching around the edge of that cotton fabric before I put it into place. I think it would have been a nice little touch. So keep that in mind if you like stitching to add that before you glue it all down. I'm adding another extra little touch of some jute twine just to finish this all off and then it's ready to put on display. I'm going to be using this styrofoam pumpkin that I had picked up from Dollar Tree and I had started to use it for another project but I never finished that so I thought I would use it for this project. I'm giving the entire pumpkin a coat of some white gesso. Now gesso is a primer and this is something I use regularly when I need to cover up something bright like this or need to coat a surface to allow for something such as paint or some glue to adhere to. And this gesso is perfect for that. You can use whatever you'd like to apply uh, some type of primer or paint to seal up your pumpkin. So here it is all nice and dry. Now I am going to be cutting up some scraps of some coffee dyed fabrics that I had. I had strips of this and some pieces of this from of other projects. And so I've been wanting to use this up as well. I'm just gonna cut it down into some more usable sizes. And again, I'm tearing them so that they have nice frayed edges. Of course, use any colors that you'd like. You don't even have to use coffee dyed paper, but 
sorry, coffee dyed fabric, but I just really like the look that it has. It has a really nice rustic country farmhouse look. Once you have a decent pile of fabric all uh, cut up, I'm gonna be using some matte decoupage and some water. It's two parts glue to one part water and I'm going to give that a stir. The reason for that is because the fabric will absorb quite a bit of this and it just helps the glue to go a long ways without creating a super thick layer of the glue. So I'm just gonna to start to apply some glue directly to the pumpkin, and then I'm gonna press my fabric into place, just like you see me doing here. I actually kinda of wish I would've started from the bottom and then worked my way up, but I do end up just making some adjustments as I go along till I get a look that I'm really happy with. So you just wanna make sure that you get the fabric fully saturated with your water and glue mixture. And then that way here, you know that it is going to stick really well to the surface of your pumpkin. Another option would be to decoupage with some napkins or some beautiful papers. Uh, just use your imagination with this. You can even paint on this if you'd like, but I really like the look of the fabric for this project. So this is what I chose to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just work on this in sections until I get the, my pumpkin all covered up to a look that I like. Again, you do want to work on a protective surface because this does get very messy. Another tip too is that you'll want to allow the top part to partially dry before you move on to the bottom. Again, that just helps with uh, the messiness because I'm telling you as I was working with this oh my word I had so much glue everywhere so I did find it helpful to allow the top to be partially dried before I moved on to the bottom. So another thing I did as well, I went in with some smaller pieces just to cover up some of those smaller gaps that I had showing. And also I found that it helped to break up any of the larger pattern pieces that I had showing that I wasn't too crazy about. So I did go in um, off camera and I added some smaller pieces just scattered here and there till I got a look that I was really happy with. Here's my pumpkin all nice and dry and you can see those added little pieces that I had. For a decorative touch, I am adding some Spanish moss and this dried pumpkin stem that I had saved from last year. So using the Spanish moss just creates again that rustic country look. This is something that I learned from Country Charm by Tracy. And this is something that she does quite often and I really like the look of that. So you could use whatever you like. You had some ribbons or some, some leaves. I'm just using some hot glue to adhere the Spanish moss as well as the stem and I'm allowing it to set and then it's ready to put, you put on display. And I'm loving how this pumpkin looks. So I had all of this scrap sweater left over from some projects from the past few years and you can see that there's just like little bits here and there. I decided that I thought these would make really cute little mushrooms. So I'm starting off with kind of creating just a basic mushroom cap shape. I didn't follow a pattern, I just kind of just winged it and just slowly cut away at this until I got a shape that I was happy with and I needed a piece for the front as well as the back. So I've got two different pieces here. You can see that the one has got the spots on the front. I thought that would create a really fun look for the front of my mushroom. And just the basic simple pattern for the back side. So I just placed the front one onto the scrap of the other one to get the shape that I needed. I'm not going for a perfect shape here. I'm just going to use some hot glue as well to uh, adhere them together. Of course, you could stitch these together instead if you'd like. 
So I'm just gonna work in sections and slowly just stick the edges together. As you can see, I only add some hot glue to the edge of each mushroom. Now you could do these in reverse and then flip them out inside out so you don't see a seam, but I kind of like just the simple rustic look of this. So I decided just to keep all my seams exposed. Um, I'm just gonna continue to close these up and then on the bottom, you can see I'm only gonna add some glue just enough so I can still access the inside of my little mushroom cap. So you can see here, I have a little hole still at the bottom of my mushroom and I'm gonna use some fiber fill to stuff the mushroom cap and that'll give it some nice dimension. Now I just get my fabric, or sorry, my fiber fill from pillows that I pick up for really cheap at Walmart. I know a viewer recently mentioned that you can get those large bags of fiber fill for really cheap at Walmart as well. Um, that's definitely an option, but I know not everybody has storage space for one of those large bags. So a pillow is a nice affordable option, or you can even just get some mini bags of some fiber fill. So once you have the mushroom cap all stuffed, you can then glue that hole shut. Next, I'm gonna be creating a stem. So I'm just taking the edge of this sweater and I'm going to roll it up into like just a stem like shape. Of course, um, you don't have to do this. You could use a little wood stem if you prefer. I thought it would be fun to use the edge of this sweater. Again, I'm using hot glue just to uh, seal it all up and glue it together. Uh, I do just check once in a while to make sure that I've got the right size. And then I am going to just trim it down as needed and use some hot glue to continue to uh, glue it to the base of my little stuffed mushroom cap. So this was a really fun uh, little idea to use up some of those scraps and you'll I want to stay tuned. I'm going to show you what I use these for in an upcoming fall video. This is an old shirt that I saved from my husband. He no longer wore it, but I love the pattern of it. And I actually was inspired by this fabric pumpkin that I had seen at Michael's. And I was so impressed by the resemblance between this shirt fabric and that fabric pumpkin that I had seen at Michael's. So I really like that look. I am going to just trim this sleeve down. Using a sleeve is a great option because the two edges are already sewn up. You just have to worry about the bottom and the top. So I'm gonna be turning it inside out and I'm gathering one end of the shirt sleeve. I'm gonna tie it off with a piece of jute string. You wanna make sure you just tie it off tight with a simple knot and remove any of the excess string. You wanna turn it back inside, or sorry, right side out. And then I am going to be using some stones on the bottom. I like to do this because then the pumpkin will sit nicely on your surface wherever you decide to use it and it won't like flop around. Once you have the stones in place, you can then fill it up as much as you'd like with your fiber fill. And then I'm just going to use some jute twine again and close off the top. And again, I'm just using a simple knot and tying it tight. I love making fabric pumpkins. It's one of my favorite fall crafts to do. They're so quick and easy and I really, really like the way they look. So if you uh, ha want, you can you or sorry, leave the fringe that you have on the top of this pumpkin. You could cut it off and then add any type of little embellishment that you'd like. I decided to leave mine, but I did trim mine up a little bit. I'm also just pulling on the fabric a little bit because I tightened it up too much in some areas and it was a little off balance. So I'm just removing the excess twine as needed. And here I am just trimming up that fringe just a little bit. I literally like the look that it gave. And so I'm just fanning it out. 
Next, I'm using again some jute twine and this time I'm also gonna be using a tapestry needle. Tapestry needle is a nice thick needle that can handle the jute twine really well and you'll wanna tie a knot in one end of the jute twine and then going up from the bottom, you're going to press this needle through. It did take a little bit of wiggling to work it through and then press it through the center. And then what I'm doing is using this jute twine to create some definition around the pumpkin. Just like you see in actual real life pumpkins, you know, those little indents that are all the way around. Well, the jute twine is going to create that look. So I find that the easiest way is to just add some string and string it, or sorry, sew it like I'm doing here by going up through the middle, through the center, coming up through the top, and then wrapping it around and going back down through the middle and coming back up. <laughs> and it's, you just keep repeating that until you are happy with the look that you have. And then I'm just going to tie this off with a simple knot and you can even use some glue to help hold everything into place. I'm just moving my strings around because I wasn't happy with the exact placement, but now I am. So I'm just gonna tie all of that off now. So now to decorate it, I'm actually gonna keep this one super simple. I'm using this stem that again, I had saved from some squash last year that I had dried, just gluing that into place and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do with this little guy because I just love the simplicity of how this piece turned out. I have had this gourd or faux squash in my stash from Dollarama now for several years and I never knew what to do with it but I finally had seen something that I was inspired by on Pinterest and I knew exactly what I had wanted to do with this so let me just show you. All right so I'm going to start off again giving this entire piece a coat of some gesso because I did not want that bright orange showing through. As I was doing this, I discovered that the dye from this actually leached through the gesso. I was actually quite surprised. So again, just use whatever you want to seal this up and cover up the bright orange, unless you want to do something really cool, like a paint technique on this, but I'm using fabric, so I didn't want that orange to be showing through my fabric. I did allow the top to dry before I worked on the bottom. That way here, I didn't get my hands all covered in the, in the gesso. Uh, it's a little bit tougher to get off if you uh, don't work in sections. All right, so here is some coffee dyed fabric that I had dyed several years ago now uh, and I hadn't used it. So I thought it would be really cool to cover up this gourd with this fabric. But as you can see, I was a little short for the side. So I'm just tacking it into place with some hot glue on the sides of this gourd. And then I'm just creating some pleats and tacking the glue down as I go along as I create those pleats. Now you might be wondering what I'm trying to do here. Well, I was inspired by some fabric pairs that I had seen on Pinterest. They kind of have that primitive country look to them and I really, really liked it. So I thought, you know what? I wonder if I could change this into a pair. It's kind of got that pear shape and I thought, I'm gonna give it a try and I was actually pleasant, pre pleasantly surprised at how well it ended up turning out. So once I had the sides all covered up, I then gathered the excess fabric up and around the top of this gourd and you can see how the pear shape is starting to take shape. So I'm using some jute twine and I'm tying it really tight because I want those gathers to stay in place. Again, I'm just using a knot and I'm tying it tight. Now I did end up cutting off the excess string. You could leave those in place, but I found they kept on getting in my way. So I decided to trim them off. I'm also trimming off the excess fabric at the top. I just cut it and then tore it because I really wanted that rustic rugged look, but 
As I was working on this, I ended up removing majority of the fabric and I'll show you that a little bit later. I decided I wanted to try and leave some of the fringe to see if I could create the look that I was going for. Here I have a branch that I had foraged that I had in my stash. I'm just cutting it down to size and that's going to be my stem for my pear, my faux pear. You can see that the stem actually works really well. It looks a little bit more realistic if you use a real branch. I used a pilot hole first by pushing it down into place and then I glued it into place once I had my hole all set and ready to go. Here I have just a few green scraps of some coffee dyed paper. I wanted to use that to create some leaves for my faux pear. And these were a little bit too small to um, just use as is. So that's why I'm using several. This one I am folding in half and using a wire just to create some definition. And these longer pieces, I'm just kind of gluing them together. Again, I'm creating the look of leaves. You could use some faux leaves if you'd like, but I thought I wanted to stick with the use of fabric for this. So that's why I decided to use these little scrap pieces of fabric that I had in my stash. So I'm going to just continue to work with this until I'm happy with how that looks. And I think it looks really cute, but I also, I also dovetailed the ends of some of the fabric as well, but this is where I'm like, okay, I'm not sure. I didn't really think the fringe on the top quite look right. Cause you know, in nature, uh, you pump, um, I'm sorry, pears don't have a fringe like that. It's nice and smooth on the top. So before I did that though, I added a little bit of jute twine just for a decorative look. And I like that, but now I have decided that I am going to remove that fringe just to create a cleaner look. And I'm really happy that I did that. So again, I just wanted a rustic look. So I cut into it and then I tore off the excess. Of course, you can just cut it right off if you'd like. And then I just continued to work with this until I got a look I was happy with. And of course, do the same. You could decoupage straight onto this um, gourd if you wanted but this fabric technique actually worked really well and you can see how cute this turned out i'm so happy with this so i'm just adding a little bit of glue here and there at the top just to help hold and secure everything into place and then it's ready to go on to display Let me know your favorite project by leaving me a comment below and also check out this video right here for some more fall inspiration. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.